going on, everybody? It is March 30th, Friday, and uh, we've got a nice little uh, main slate of baseball tonight. Uh, nine games. I'm not going to touch on uh, the the early slate. I'm just going to focus here on uh, the nine games tonight. As of right now, two of the games don't have a line, so when we get to that point, uh, A's, Angels, and Dodgers, Giants, I will just sort of gloss over that part. Um for those who didn't watch yesterday, my name is Josh Engelman. I am the director of content at awesomeo.com, and uh, these are my um, video podcasts, I guess we can call them. Uh, taking a look at the full slate uh, using my spreadsheet as my background here. And then uh, moving forward, starting on Monday, we're going to have um, another, another voice in the box, and we're going to... Uh, have a big time back and forth. I'm, I'm excited to get started. Consider this the uh, the soft launch. Get everybody warmed up to everything. So we've got uh, you know a bunch of interesting games today. Um, I get to see my Braves go to 2-0, and so that's really all that matters in my opinion, sitting at the top of the NL East right now. We'll see where we're at at the end of this season. Um, let's just dive in right now. We'll start with the Blue Jays-Yankees game. I bet uh, Yankees fans were pretty happy yesterday. Stanton going tater salad. Um, so the Blue Jays uh, projected for 4.1 runs. Um, Yankees projected for 4.9 runs. Yankees with a 58% uh, chance to win based on those numbers. Uh, we've got Aaron Sanchez going for the Blue Jays and uh, Masahiro Tanaka going for the Yankees. Uh, neither guy is as good as probably their reputation proceeds. Um, Sanchez with uh, projected 7.4 Ks per nine. Um, all the all the projected stats that we'll be looking at here, um, here, uh, ba are based on uh, steamer projections for the season. So that's projected on base percentage, projected slugging, and then uh, you know their projected base running ability. And then here we've got uh, Ks per nine walks per nine and uh, projected FIP. So Sanchez with a 7.4 K per nine, uh, not really high end, uh, pretty high walk rate leads to a, a FIP that's nothing spectacular. And then uh, for Tanaka, 8.6 Ks per nine is pretty solid. Uh, 2.1 uh, walks per nine, very solid control from Tanaka. 4.07 FIP is a little higher than you would like. Um, so it's not the best pitching matchup, but uh, you know guys with slightly electric arms. Sanchez was a much more elect electric arm um, coming up as a prospect. Uh, Blue Jays tweaked him a little bit, and he sort of lost some of his luster. So diving in, um, you know some of the Blue Jays guys look okay today. I'd be a little wary of uh, stacking up against Tanaka, um, but if you wanted to look at something along the lines of a you know a Travis Donaldson Smoke Granderson uh, stack on DK, you know I would understand. There are three of those four guys at least. Um, I think all of those guys you know will provide similar value here. Uh, Donaldson in particular. Um, with the highest end, although you would be paying the most for him as well. I've got a sneeze, guys, so my bad. I might be able to back it off just by talking about it. Yeah, I did. It worked. So, I don't love Donaldson as much on FanDuel. I think his uh, price is a little bit prohibitive. Um, if we take a deeper look at third base on uh, FanDuel... I think that I would much rather take a closer look at, you know, maybe getting Bregman, um, particularly in an Astro stack, as the Astros have uh, the highest projected run total on the day. Um, I'd also take a look at uh, Jake Lamb. Um, I think those are two guys that are slightly better values than. Uh, than Donaldson right now. Lamb, uh, $600 cheaper as well. But I don't necessarily mind anything coming from the Blue Jays. I just think uh, with their low-ish projected run total, um, you know, it wouldn't be my first spot to look for a stack. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind ending up with it. Um, 
I'd say, hmm, probably Granderson looks to be the best play from the Blue Jays on either site. Uh, just, you know, the right amount of value. Um, projected 447 slugging is solid for me. Uh, he could have he could be in line for a decent day. But, yeah, I'm just sort of lukewarm on the Blue Jays. Yankees, on the other hand, uh, not hard to be a fan there. Um, lineup projected for 4.9 runs, uh, one of the better totals. I believe it is third for today. Uh, you should expect some scoring. Um, Sanchez has a little bit of trouble getting uh, guys on, so um, you know it could be could be a rough night. I definitely want to be a guy at the top of the Yankees order. So you know if you wanted to look, Gardner, Judge, Stanton stacks I think would be you know phenomenal. But you're obviously paying heavy heavy freight uh, to get Judge and Stanton. You know that might. That, that is a little tricky. Um, I think that Sanchez looks okay. Uh, I just sort of... I, I don't love it, but, you know, projected 516 slugging is is no laughing matter. It doesn't matter what position that's coming from. Um, you know, noted power hitter Didi Gregorius slotted into the four slot is not exactly something I'm super stoked about. Um... So my focus would be on Judge and Stanton, and in particular, I think that uh, Judge looks a little bit better, um, at least on FanDuel, uh, but it's close. I, the, being able to pay that $4,200, like saving that 400 bucks is, is big. I would look at guy like a, a Gardner-Judge-Sanchez stack, or Gardner-Stanton-Sanchez, just to grab you know chunks of that upper half of the lineup, because... Based on these lines, uh, the Yankees could be in for a good night. Now, if, to just to touch on the pitchers a little bit, um, I don't see Sanchez as someone particularly viable. Um, you know, it's not really a great spot for them. Uh, I think there are better value plays out there right now. You can talk me into it, I guess, but it, I'd rather pay up to, like, Fulty or something. On DK, um, <clears throat> I think there's enough value at other spots where you don't have to force Sanchez in. Sanchez's salary is, you know, basically smack dab in the middle for for the DK slate today. So I would need a little bit more out of him to be confident. Now for Tanaka um, on Fanduel. It's not my favorite spot, but I think that he has the opportunity for a big day. Uh, if he gets started early, you know, he could start mowing guys down, um, build a little bit of momentum, maybe capitalize on the bats. It's not something I normally think of, but, you know, if if these guys come out swinging again, uh, it could be a little demoralizing. So I wouldn't mind having Tanaka um, on either site, but he's not the first guy that jumps off the page for me. Next up, we'll go to Marlins and Cubs. Uh, this one's going to be a or should be a bloodbath. Um, Marlins with the 3.5 expected runs, uh, Cubs with the five expected runs. That's uh, a 66% win percentage expected for the Cubs. It makes it really hard to want to have a piece of the Marlins. Uh, for the Marlins, we've got Caleb Smith going uh, 8.3 8 projected Ks per nine, 3.8 projected. Uh, walks per nine with a 455 FIP. And then we've got Kyle Hendricks going for the Cubs. Uh, 7.5 Ks per nine, 2.6 walks per nine, and a 4.1 FIP. Um, Caleb Smith is not in play for me on either site. Not even close. And uh, for Kyle Hendricks, I think that he looks like he's in a really good spot on, um, on FanDuel. I think that 8200 is a, is a nice price. Um, I'd probably prefer Alex Wood at $200 uh, more expensive, but I think Hendricks is a decent um, pivot from Wood. Uh, Wood more, probably more likely to pick up some Ks today. So, you know, Hendricks looks like a little bit better option for that win. Um, and then Hendricks on DraftKings... I think he's just sort of uh, a coin flip guy. There's a 
bunch of guys in the same bucket where I wouldn't mind having him, but he's not a guy I would seek out. If he pops up for me, he pops up. So looking at the Marlins, not a ton to like. Um, you know, you can use Lewis Brinson, uh, Brian Anderson, maybe uh, maybe Justin Bauer uh, as, uh, you know, one-off guys in lineups. Um, maybe Brinson on DK, but really there's not a ton to like here on the Marlins. It's a bad lineup. They're not expected to score a lot of runs. Uh, 3.5 runs is the third worst total for the day. Um, again, that's without the A's, Angels, Dodgers, and Giants having uh, any projected totals yet. But uh, the Marlins aren't the spot for me. Um, I don't really want to take too much of a look at it. And, and I, I didn't bring this up uh, before the Blue Jays-Yankees game, but as of right now, it doesn't look like rain is going to be an issue for any game tonight. So we don't necessarily have to pay attention to the weather right now. Um, what we do want to pay attention to is probably the Cubbies. Uh, Cubs, with the five projected runs for this game, it's the second highest projected run total uh, behind the Astros. And, you know, that's with good reason. Uh, Ian Happ coming off uh, the first pitch of the season tater yesterday. Uh, I think that he looks really good. Um, any sort of combination of Hap, Bryant, Rizzo, and Contreras is something that I would want to take a look at closer. I know you're paying up. This is one of those uh, expensive but good stacks instead of just an uh, in inexpensive but good stack. This is where you're getting the high end. Um, these guys will rake. Um, I don't. I wouldn't have necessarily a problem with getting uh, Albert Almora. I've loved him for so long, ever since he got drafted. Um, on FanDuel, the Cubs stack isn't necessarily as great. I think they stack up a little bit easier on DK, or at least a little bit um, more similarly. Uh, Bryant and Rizzo, as you can see just by the shading on that value column. A um, little bit tougher to grab in FanDuel, and it's just because of the big price points. Totally makes sense. Um, we've got Rizzo as the uh, the most expensive first baseman on the slate today. We've got Bryant as the most expensive third baseman on the slate today. Going to be hard to grab those guys, but uh, putting together Cubs stacks, in my opinion, is uh, is a good idea. They should be relatively popular. Not getting a lot out of the Marlins here, so be prepared for that. But excuse me, stuffed up today, guys. Sorry. Try to get to that mute button as fast as I can. Um, no issues grabbing anybody from the Cubs. Uh, I, my focus would be on those top five guys. You can sneak Zobrist in, in my opinion. But again, I don't love grabbing guys um, towards the bottom of the order. The benefit of uh, stacking guys is trying to get those extra plate appearances that could happen. And you can only get those from the top. So, like I said, not a problem with taking the Cubs. We go to the Rays and Red Sox. Rays hosting the Red Sox. Rays with a 3.4 run projected total. Red Sox 4.1 runs projected. Uh, Red Sox are 58% uh, to win this game. Uh, we've got Blake Snell going for the Rays. 9.4 projected Ks per nine. 4.1 walks per nine and a 4.05 FIP. We've got David Price going for the Red Sox. 9 Ks. Per nine, 2.3 walks per nine, and a 3.77 FIP. Uh, if we look at Snell to start, I think that he could be a reasonable uh, value play on FanDuel, but it just so happens that Fulty, $200 below, is a guy that I would much rather be on. Um, and then for Snell on DK, I, I actually think he's a nice value. Uh, he might, he, he would work as a as a second pitcher for sure. Um, I would have no problem really running him out there. Uh, you know, be aware it's not a great spot for the Rays to pick up a win, um, and their offense is very likely to let them down. But you know, I can see Snell putting together a nice game. The 9.4 Ks 
per nine projected is uh, is a really solid total. And uh, if he can keep the walks in check, he could be in for a decent night. David Price, um, fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. I don't have a problem having him. I think that he looks like a decent option. I would prefer Price to Tanaka. Um, and Tanaka is $200 more expensive. Uh, no, no problems whatsoever taking David Price. Now for Price on FanDuel, or on, Dra- on DraftKings rather, I'm a little bit less interested. Um, I think there's a little bit more value just by stepping down a couple hundred dollars. Uh, but no problems running out David Price as a starter. Um, that shouldn't be terribly surprising for a guy with a 3.77 fit. Not the same guy that he used to be, but he's still damn good. Um, if you were looking to go for the Rays hitters, um, it's not a direction that I highly recommend. 3.4 uh, projected runs is the second lowest total on the day. Um, so it's hard to bet on too much offense coming out of here. Uh, you can grab, you know, CJ Crone and Kier Meyer, and I think that you'd be okay with like that little two-man stack. But the Rays' bats are so bad. Look at those first five projected on base percentages: 320, 320, 305, 308, 300. Two of those guys with sub 400 projected slugging. Offense is at a premium here, so uh, David Price could be in a very good spot. And I don't know how much we talk about it, but we've got the revenge narrative going, which is something that I don't believe in whatsoever, so don't use that as a reason to uh, play anybody. Um, yeah, uh, just Rays are not really the spot for me. Uh, you can use Kiermeyer as a one-off. I think that the value could be there, um, but... From a stack perspective, the Rays aren't a direction I'd be uh, looking. Red Sox, though, look very stackable, particularly on DK. Um, Grabbing some combination of Betts, Benintendi, uh, Handley, and JD. Um, You know, lots of high-end talent there. If you need to drop down a little bit for a little bit lower of a price, you know, you can grab Xander Bogarts. Uh, they're a little pricey on FanDuel. Uh, ben Nintendi and Ramirez definitely looking like the best plays. Uh, those are guys that I'll likely have a, a decent amount of um, in all of my lineups on FanDuel. I'll fill in with little bits of uh, Betts, JD, and Bogarts, and you know maybe Devers to a little to a lesser extent. But I do like the Red Sox a lot. Um, I'm hoping that you know they can jump on Blake Snell, but. More than anything, I'm just not really concerned with the Rays offense being able to keep that game close. And, um, you know, that could be a good thing for the Red Sox, Red Sox bats and their confidence. Uh, favorite play on the Red Sox is probably Hanley, if I'm being honest. I think that, and I'm, I'm basing this on feel. I don't, you know, I let the numbers speak for themselves generally, but... Uh, Hanley in the heart of that order makes me... I just have a feeling he's going to have a big game today. That's it. I don't normally talk like that, but it's just one of those things. Uh, Next up, we will go to the Braves hosting the Phillies. Braves. Guys, sorry. I'm all gummed up. Went and had a drink or two last night, and uh, I'm paying the price for it. It's thickening me. Butter coffee probably isn't helping either. Uh, Braves 4.6 runs projected. Phillies 4.4. Braves with the four or with the 53% win probability. We got Fulty with the 8.2 strikeouts per nine, 3.2 walks per nine, and a 4.9 or 4.59 FIP. Uh, Nick Pavetta going for the Phillies 8.9 projected Ks per nine, 3.6 walks per nine, and a 4.6 FIP. Uh, neither of these guys are particularly good from a pro- projected standpoint. Um, I think that uh, Fulty is in a really nice spot, though. Ignore my uh, Braves bias for a second. Um, I just think that as a value play in the, the middle tier of pitchers, uh, he's definitely someone I would want to target on FanDuel to fit in some bigger bats. 
And then as a second pitcher on DK, um, he's probably my favorite option. Uh, for Pavetta, I think that I don't see necessarily the same upside for him. Uh, I would avoid Pavetta on FanDuel. And if you want to be a little contrarian, I don't necessarily have a problem with Pavetta as a second pitcher on DK. Now, looking at the Braves hitters, uh, the 4.6 run or projected runs is, is fine for me, so I don't have any problem um, identifying any Braves stacks. I think there's a lot of high-end value there, but maybe not a lot of uh, major upside. Um, I'd stack, like, I, I don't have any issues grabbing uh, Ender and Ozzy to, to just stack off the top portion of the Braves lineup. Um, you're going to have to pay up to grab Freddie Freeman. No surprises there. Let's see what his salary rank is on FanDuel. So Freeman is the third most expensive uh, first baseman tonight on FanDuel. He's the fourth most expensive first baseman on DK. Um, I really like him on DraftKings. Uh, on FanDuel, I'm just completely fine having him. So no problems whatsoever. Uh, going with a 1-2-3 stack from the Braves. A um, little bit less excited of Marcakis and Flowers, just because there's so little power in Marcakis' bat now. Uh, 387 projected slugging is tough, um, and that's sort of what you're looking for here. Uh, for Flowers, I, don't, I wouldn't mind that either. You can go you know, one two five, in my opinion, and still be pretty happy. Um, but no problems focusing on the Braves. I'll likely have quite a few stacks of Braves tonight. Now for the Phillies, I feel a similar way, just a little bit muted. Um, Phillies with the 4.4 projected runs is just a little bit lower, so I would want a little bit less uh, coming out of Philly. Um, I think that uh, Cesar Hernandez, Carlos Santana, Nick Williams, uh, Reese Hoskins, uh, Odubel Herrera, they all look good, um, or at least look fine um i would be i would pump the brakes a little bit on williams and herrera just from uh, a low slugging perspective um hernandez is in play for me just because of that high on base percentage uh relatively low price and uh you know the opportunity to grab those extra plate appearances which are more than key in these scenarios um nothing to do backflips over uh, it's just the phillies but, you know, grabbing some of these guys at the top of the Philly order is not a problem because, um, you know, while I like Fulty as a, a value play, there are multiple scenarios where his night doesn't go as well as you would like it to, um, as evidenced by that 4.6 FIP. Now, to the Rangers. Uh, Rangers hosting the Astros. Uh, the Rangers have a 4.1 expected run total, uh, pretty low for the slate. Astros with a 5.4 projected run total. That is numero uno right now. Uh, we've got a 63% chance to win for the Astros. Uh, Rangers running out Doug Fister, 6.8 uh, strikeouts per nine. Not very good. 3.3 walks per nine, uh, leading to a 4.81 projected FIP. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, 7.5. Uh, strikeouts per nine, 2.7 walks per nine, and a 3.78 FIP. Um, so for Fister, uh, one of the lower salaried guys on FanDuel, I don't really see uh, a situation where I would want to have him. And then um, let's bounce back over to DK. Uh, second lowest salary on DraftKings, uh, I don't really see a scenario where I would want to have Fister either. Um, for Dallas, uh, second most expensive pitcher on FanDuel, probably not a direction I want to go. I think I'd be a little bit more interested in Robbie Ray. I'd rather pay the extra 300 um, But, like, you can get there because of the confidence and sort of my lack of confidence in the Rangers' offense. Uh, looking at DraftKings for Dallas is... 11-8, he's the most expensive pitcher by $1,400. Um, 
don't love the idea of paying all the way up for him. It seems like an unnecessary uh, extra amount of salary. I, I think that, you know, maybe running out Alex Wood and his, uh, you know, obviously more risky proposition, but I'd feel a little bit more comfortable there. If we look at the Rangers, um, you know, the 4.1 expected runs is a little concerning. I think that you know, you can grab sort of uh, the De Shields and Gallo stack, hope that De Shields gets on, hope Gallo does the only thing that he can do, which is put balls into orbit. Um, I think that would be a reasonable proposition. I just, you know, you need to be aware that you're facing a pitcher with pretty high end talent. So I don't necessarily like running against that for stacks. Um, some of these guys look okay on an individual basis, um, but for me, I don't like running head-on into quality pitching. So the Rangers aren't necessarily a team where I would really want to have my eye on the prize. Uh, Gallo looks like a nice option for me as filler if I need a first baseman on FanDuel. But other than that, I'd like to I'd like to focus on teams that are probably going to score a couple more runs. Speaking of teams that are going to score a couple more runs, the Astros, 5.4 projected runs is a ginormous total. Um, obviously, they're going to be incredibly popular. Obviously, they have uh, very healthy price tags, but you're not, I don't expect you to be upset having some sort of combination of Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, and Redick, um, or Marwin Gonzalez. Hell, even Evan Gaddis. I just I hate that Gaddis hits eighth. Uh, it's just not helpful from a fantasy perspective. It really mutes him based on losing those uh, those plate appearances. Um, if I had to pick anybody out for uh, the Astros, I'd say that my favorite play would probably be Bregman. I think thirty six hundred is a nice price point for him on Fanduel. Uh, lots of value I think could be provided there. And just his spot in the order is is perfect, in my opinion. Uh, Bregman would be my main focus coming out of the Astros. But in all honesty, he won a bunch of these guys. Uh, they look really good. Let's move on to the Diamondbacks. That's not how you spell Diamondbacks. I should just use the drop-down that I put there. It's there for a reason. Um... D-backs and Rockies, uh, Diamondbacks with the 4.7 projected runs, Rockies 3.8. The D-backs are looking at a scenario where uh, they would be 60% favorites today at home against the Rockies. Robbie Ray projected as the starter for the Diamondbacks, 11.2 Ks per nine, 3.7 walks per nine, and a 3.53 FIP. Very, very nice. Uh, Tyler Anderson, 8.2 Ks per nine, 2.9 walks per nine, and a 4.33 FIP. Not as nice, but, you know, solid. Uh, Robbie Ray, most expensive starter on FanDuel, 9,500. And I think with good reason. Uh, this game looks like a really nice matchup uh, for the D-backs. I don't have any problem paying up for Robbie Ray. If you're going to go for any of the higher salary pitchers on FanDuel, I think that Ray is um, the best option. Now, Ray is actually the sixth most expensive starter on DraftKings. So if I love him that much on FanDuel, at that price point, I absolutely love him on DK. I think that he's an exceptional option, and I will he'll likely be my highest own uh, pitcher on DraftKings, uh, him and Fulty. Uh, so for the Diamondbacks offense, uh, I would like to stack some combination of Pollock, Goldschmidt, and Lamb. I'm not the biggest fan of Jeff Mathis. Um, I would I would make my I would make my main focus to be Pollock, Goldschmidt, and Lamb, um, and particularly on a scenario on DraftKings where I can get Robbie Ray at a reduced price. I'd, I'd bring them all along. Uh, for the Rockies, uh, I'd be a little nervous to focus on any sort of rocky stack the 3.8 projected runs is very low so you're really looking for um an event tonight that's not necessarily expected but 
uh, running out DJ LeMayhew, particularly on FanDuel as a one-off second baseman, I think is fine. Um, I feel similarly about using Nolan Arenado at third on DraftKings. I know that um, that's a pretty high price tag, uh, second highest price third baseman on the slate, but it's not a bad value. Uh, if you're trying to get away from Bregman or Bryant, uh, no problems taking Arenado at that price. Uh, but for me, you know, you can you can stack up these guys a little bit, but I don't see the appeal in grabbing the Rockies. I would rather focus on the heart of the Diamondbacks order or just focus on Robbie Ray. A's and Angels, uh, no line right now. Let's double check that, see if anything has come up. Uh, it has not. So we've got uh, Sean Manea going for the A's, Tyler Skaggs going for the Angels. Um, Manea with the 7.6 Ks per nine, three walks per nine, and a 4.43 FIP. Skaggs with the 8.1 Ks per nine, 3.2 walks per nine, and the 4.39 FIP. Um, I'm not really wild about the A's here. Uh, I think you can probably use Chris Davis safely, and I think uh, Marcus Semien is an okay option just for being at the top of the order. But I don't really love the A's lineup. Lots of uh, not amazing on-base percentage guys. Not a lot of heat in the bats. Um, A's aren't really a team I want to look at. If I look at uh, Sean Manea on FanDuel, he's at 7,300. Uh, I don't like him at all. I think that that's probably one of the, the lesser plays on FanDuel. Plenty of value at other spots. He's not a direction I would go. Um, on DraftKings, however, uh, I think that he could be worth a flyer as your second um, as your second pitcher. Uh, 6000 salary uh, could be a little bit of value. But from a hitter perspective, uh, I just really don't love the A's lineup. And um, I'm not project. I'm not expecting a huge projected run total for them either. For the Angels, uh, if we want to look at Skaggs first, um, Skaggs at 6,100 on Fanduel, I think provides a solid value. Um, he's one of the better low salaried values on the board. And uh, on DraftKings, he's a bit. He's priced significantly differently. Priced in the middle tier on DraftKings, um, I don't think that he's rosterable whatsoever on DraftKings. Uh, stacking up the Angels lineup, I don't have a problem with. Uh, on DK, Kinsler, Trout, Upton, Pujols, um, even Cozart, you can grab all of those guys in any sort of combination and be happy about it. Uh, Angels on FanDuel, um, the Upton, Pujols, Cozart spot looks really good. Uh, Trout at 4,800 is, uh, is a pretty lofty price tag. Clearly, I mean he's Mike Trout, uh, second mo or most expensive outfielder on the slate on FanDuel, two hundred dollars more expensive than Stanton. Uh, it's hard to get to that price point. You'll probably be paying down at, at pitcher to do so. Maybe with a faulty, perhaps. Um, so I don't have any problems grabbing these guys from the Angels. I would want a couple of them. Uh, I'm anxious to see what the projected line comes out at. That could change what I'm saying a little bit, but I wouldn't expect it to move too much. Um, you know, there's a lot of boom busts in the Angels. Not the best on base percentages for the team. So, you know, you're betting on the bats being live today. I'm willing to take that bet at least in uh, a small chunk of lineups. We go to the Dodgers. Dodgers hosting the Giants. Uh, again, no line has been posted for this game. We've got Alex Wood going for the Dodgers. 8.6 projected Ks per nine, 2.6 projected walks per nine, and a 3.68 FIP. Um, going up against Johnny Cueto, 7.6 Ks per nine, 2.6 walks per nine, and a 4.04 projected FIP. Uh, both guys are good. Uh, I, I like the pitching in this game. Um, looking at Alex Wood on FanDuel, I think he's probably the best value on the board uh, as, as a combination of top end talent and value relative to price. I think that Wood lands in probably the best spot. Um, on DraftKings, 
it's a little bit more muted. I think that he's in a very similar bucket with a couple guys. I'd prefer him to, to Keuchel, but other than that, you can flip coins on Wood or Price, you know, Hendricks, Tanaka, all the way down. You know, then I would get to Robbie Ray, and I would, I would have a preference there from a value perspective. But no problem paying up for him on DK. Just not the same sort of value. Uh, from looking at uh, stack options for the Dodgers, uh, I think that it's pretty well just the top four. Uh, Taylor, Seager, Bellinger, and Puig. Um, Bellinger, I don't love on FanDuel. I think that Puig is the best as a one-off scenario. Uh, but if I were going to be stacking them on DK, I think it's a little bit more feasible. All the guys have relatively similar projections and similar value marks, so you can feel free to grab them in any sort of order and be happy about it. Uh, if I'm looking at anybody on DK in particular, I think that Seeger probably stands out the most to me. Um, second most expensive shortstop, but $500 cheaper than Correa. Uh, if you can't get the salary to work, I think using Seeger is not a bad move whatsoever. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be good there, but there's just... Not a ton to like on the Dodgers' offensive side because they are pretty expensive, uh, particularly on FanDuel. On the Giants' side, I'm even less enthused. I don't expect a ton of expected runs here. Um, I don't really like the lineup in general, but you know you can. There, I don't see a ton of upside in the Giants. If you wanted to look at something like. I don't know, McCutcheon and Posey and Longoria. I mean, maybe, but in my opinion, that would be force-feeding the Giants. Uh, They're okay in little bits, but I wouldn't be focusing on the Giants at all. Final game of the night, Padres hosting the Brewers. Padres with the four projected runs. Brewers with three projected runs. Padres are 63% to win. Um, we've got Joey Lucchesi on the mound for the Padres, 8Ks per 9, 3 walks per 9, and a 4.11 FIP. And my boy Chassin, 7.6Ks per 9, 3.6 walks per 9, 4.58. I used to end up with him all the time in OOTP, and I don't know why. I always converted him to a reliever. I don't know. It's just how it worked. Um, the good news is, from a pitching perspective, don't really love it. Uh, Joey has the lowest salary on FanDuel, and uh, I think that's probably with good reason. I don't think that he's playable whatsoever on either site. Uh, Chassin, um, worth a little bit of a look on uh, on FanDuel, mid-tier option, but I think that there's a ton more upside in Fulte. And then, uh, again, for Chassin on DraftKings, little bit of value there, but not somebody I want to go absolutely nuts for. From a lineup perspective, um, I think that you can get to an okay stack on the Padres. Uh, but, you know, four runs projected is not exactly a large total. I'd be a little cognizant of... Um, you know what you're paying for here lots of low salary guys on the Padres the only guys that have any real pop in their bat would be Will Myers and Eric Hosmer Uh, I think they're priced all right on DraftKings but there's not a ton of value in their numbers um, on FanDuel Padres are probably just not the spot for me particularly in that ballpark now for the Brewers um Three projected runs is is tough sledding. That's uh, the lowest total by far um, on the day. Uh, did I enter that correctly? Is it seven? Oh, I fucked that up. Cool. Giants line does exist. Padres Brewers is the one that doesn't. Good to know. Knew that looked weird when I was looking at it. Games are in a different order. So if I hop back over there and refresh that, um, it's, and it's now a seven and a half point line, so let's adjust that as well. Circling back to the Dodgers Giants for just one second, um, I feel significantly more comfortable with that Dodgers number. 
uh, 4.3 expected runs. I, I'd rather, I'd much rather have guys from the Dodgers, and I don't, I, I still don't see a ton to like from the Giants. Uh, ignore everything I said about the Padres Brewers line. None of that really matters. And what that does tell me is that I'm significantly less interested in this game. Uh, keep an eye on the line to see where that breaks. But if you need anybody from the Brewers, you're looking in that 2 3 4 slot, the Lorenzo Kane, Travis Shaw, Ryan Braun um, area. That would be a place where I would look to stack. Shaw and Braun both have some pop. Um, those would be the guys that I would want to focus on from the Brewers. So that's where I'm at right now, guys. Um, obviously, things are subject to change as lineups come out. Um, you know, that'll be happening throughout the late afternoon. So feel free to hit me up with any baseball questions throughout the day. You can um, ask those on the in the comments section of this video. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, that is at Josh Engelman. Um, or you can find you know some articles at awesomeo.com, which is the article that's up there. Uh, my Twitter uh, handle will be in the uh, show notes as well. Um, we've got a lot of baseball content starting to come out, guys, and uh, we're getting really excited for it. So feel free to reach out. Please like and subscribe this video um, if you were happy with it. And honestly, like and subscribe it if you weren't. It uh, really helps the channel grow. We really want to get um, as much video content as we can out to everyone. Uh, stay tuned for some baseball live streams. They'll be coming up in the near future as well. And uh, that's it. Best of luck tonight, and uh, go Braves!